If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. You, you have shown yourself to us, O God, by word and spirit, with signs and wonders, in flesh and blood, yet we still struggle to live and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, enter into our lives, and cast out our fear, so that we may come to trust in you. Amen.
holy God, we give you thanks and praise for light and light and love and all above the presence of the living Lord among us. By your spirit who breathes within us, strengthen our faith, use our gifts, and work in our lives to bear witness to the resurrection of Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Our first reading is from the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 2. Hear now the word of our Lord. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, and we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so, so that our joy may be made complete. This is a message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of our God, the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. God of all who doubt and believe, by the gift of your Spirit, enable us to hear with our ears and see with our eyes and to touch with our hands your word of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Hear now the Gospel of our Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands in the marks of the nails and place my fingers in the marks of the nails and place my hand into his side, I'll never believe. Eight days later, 
His disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which were not written in his book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <laughs> of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Use us as servants and stewards of your gospel. Use us, O oh Lord, to share that word with all that we meet. We pray through Jesus Christ, your blessed Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that we often find it hardest to believe the things that we wish to believe the most? Sometimes that becomes an issue. Uh, perhaps it's one of life's torments, but for example, who is more tormented by doubt than a person in love? How could he or she love someone like me? Or, or think of the family of a, a, a combat soldier reported missing in action who suddenly find that he's going to be among them again. He's coming home. You simply can't believe it until you hold him in your arms. Such doubt needs to be proved by belief and to be re realized. But doubt and faith often go hand in hand. Think about that a little bit with me this morning. It, it may also seem like a contradiction to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, we all need to learn to doubt with faith. Sounds odd, odd doesn't it? But maybe we need to doubt because of our faith. Maybe doubt through our faith. But that kind of doubting helps us to experience a growth process in our lives. It's, it's found in a Christian's life. This may make us all feel like doubting Thomas's. Uh, and perhaps that's not bad either. Way, way, way too often we've experienced uh, the tendency to judge this disciple because of that one short phrase in the Bible. We have no evidence whatsoever that Thomas doubted any more than any of the rest of us. <clears throat> Haven't we all had a time of doubt in our lives? We have. Uh, but in, in fact, this is the only occasion in Scripture that we hear of Thomas doubting. 
perhaps one reality of the situation is that we, we find someone with whom we can personally relate in Thomas. I was trying to think of a story or an example this week, and then it occurred to me, we've got perhaps the best story right here, the story of Thomas. Since I, we don't like to doubt, and sometimes we feel that doubting is a grievous sin, maybe it's time we heard the message of this guy named Thomas. Martin Luther, Martin Luther uh, found someone with whom he could relate in times of doubt, and if you know his story, you know he was a man who had a lot of doubt. In fact, it wasn't until he found Romans 1.17 that he began to <coughs> cease to doubt and to have faith. It, he related to Jesus Christ as the one who helped his doubt. When confronted by his opponents, he would often simply reply that his authority was from Jesus Christ. And it was given to him in baptism. I am baptized was one of his favorite expressions and a watchword with Luther. Uh, Jesus is our refuge too when we doubt. Jesus Christ provided times of doubt in in the gracious gift of baptism. So we can say with Luther, we are baptized. Now this morning I'd like to invite you to, to look at this gospel reading a little more carefully and this man, Thomas. I think we'll all find an example that helps us in times of doubt. Thomas doubted because his faith began to wane. He hadn't seen Jesus. And as a result, his doubt was kind of trying to destroy his faith, but it didn't work. His doubt simply drove him to reaffirm his faith. But remember what that week must have been like, like for him. That week between the time when the other disciples saw Jesus and eight days later when he saw him face to face. It must have been a miserable week. I wonder if he ever was even able to pray. I don't know, maybe in his situation it might be the same way. Um, but I hope this morning you'll see Thomas in a little different light as one of the truly great examples of discipleship. For Thomas, the cross had been anticipated, although not perhaps explicitly, but you may remember the story of Lazarus' illness and Jesus saying, let's go to Bethany. Well, Thomas made a comment. None of the other disciples, as I recall, said anything about it, but Thomas said, let us go also that we may die with him. Realize that Bethany was very close to Jerusalem, and Jesus already had a bunch of enemies, and Thomas was willing to go along. Thomas never lacked for courage, and he, he loved Jesus deeply, even though on this particular occasion he may have been a bit of a proverbial pessimist. But you know what? Apocryphal writings point to Thomas as the patron saint of India. When Jesus said, go into all the world, he meant it. And Thomas was one of the examples. Others went to Europe, others to Asia, but Thomas went to India. And he, as the as the patron saint of India, had, had that been scriptural instead of apocryphal, I think the moniker doubting Thomas would never have come up. When Jesus died, Thomas did what every heartbroken person in the world wants to do. He withdrew into himself. I don't know, maybe some of the other disciples did too. It's an argument from silence, but it it, it's possible, and maybe even probable. He seemed to be saying, if I must suffer, let me suffer alone. Let me, let me get away and not taint others with my doubt and my fear. That's speculation, of course, but you know, it happened. When Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas simply wasn't with them. The, the news of Jesus that he had risen from the dead was too good to be true. 
He once again withdrew and this time into his own pessimism. Alas, I see the nail prints. His doubting had begun to smother his faith. His solitude and his doubt may have begun to turn around and maybe make him even a little bit bitter. But a week later, when he saw Jesus face to face and was invited to touch him, Thomas fell on his knees in devotion and all he could say was, my Lord and my God. Jesus responded, maybe a little bit of a rebuke, huh? Do you believe because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Indeed, that kind of points to all of us, doesn't it? We didn't see it, but we certainly experience it nonetheless. We experience it in our hearts and lives. We, we experience the resurrection in the, uh, on Easter, and we celebrate Jesus Christ in our lives every day. Like Thomas, as, as Christians, we cannot find the answers alone. The answers need to come from God's holy word and from the communion of the saints, the church, the body of Christ. This was a mistake Thomas made. He withdrew from the fellowship of believers. When he missed that meeting, he missed much more, didn't he? Much more than just seeing the Lord even. He missed the gift of the Holy Spirit. He, he missed the joy of a mutual discovery. He missed, missed the fellowship of his fellow believers. How often do we feel that no one can feel like we do? Depression can kind of cause that to happen to all of us. We lie to ourselves. But it's always helpful to remember 1 Corinthians 10, 13. One of my favorite verses. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. That's from the message by Eugene Peterson. And I like that translation very much. Feeling sorry for himself and locking himself away didn't help a bit. Doubt breeds doubt, just as faith breeds faith. The fellowship of the, of the believers means that we, we crave the fellowship of other Christians. That's one of the things about our congregation that I really enjoy. We get here in time to fellowship, and when I stand at the door greeting people, uh, oh, you come by. <laughs> but the reality is everybody's gathering and celebrating together, fellowshipping together. I think that's wonderful. Doubt drives us to seek the answers. The, the history of human doubt, uh, of human success and development is based on doubt. Look at some of the great men of history. Copernicus, Columbus, <laughs> Galileo, Fulton, Bell, Watt, Edison, Eli Whitney, Think of how lucky we are today that those men doubted things had to remain with the status quo. Things had to remain as they were. And each of them contributed greatly to the human life. Martin Luther struggled with doubt, as I said earlier. It forced him to seek his answers through scripture. Every reformer doubted that the teachings that were present had to be the status quo. Calvin, Zwingli, Wesley, John Knox, well, all the rest, I'll let you name some others, um, would lead people to a deeper and more vibrant faith. Doubt caused Thomas to separate himself from the community of faith. But it was also doubt that led him to the upper room the following week, and later he found the truth of Jesus face to face. Doubt should always lead us to seek answers. Answers that move us to a, a deeper commitment to our Lord Jesus Christ. Doubt builds our faith that makes us stronger. It's a lot like weightlifting. Not that I know much about that. <laughs> <laughs> you start small, 
and work until you can lift greater weights, right? I've heard that anyway. <laughs> Doubt should always be linked to faith, and faith should always be linked to other people. We share together. And when we doubt, we can share that doubt openly with our fellow Christians because we all have the same problem. We doubt at times, but we all have the same solution. <coughs> Through our doubt, we come to faith. There's great power in the gospel. It was, it was meant to be used by people of doubt and by people of faith. If Christ message touches us deeply, we cannot help but proclaim it. Our, our mission is to bring everyone to the point of it, well, of Thomas's exclamation, my Lord and my God. The peace of God that passes all of human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In times of doubt and in times of faith. Please stand as you're able. We'll sing hymn 513. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, 
In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After the same manner, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious saving blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let's pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant that we who have received the sacrament of the body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, giver of life, hear us as we pray, saying, Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for the church. Let your church be a living sign of the woundedness and healing of Christ, sharing the gift of forgiveness and the gospel of reconciliation. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us our spirit of peace. We pray for the earth. Help us to see the scars of death and mark your good creation, to seek the blessings of life and to offer all creatures, pouring out your blessing, O Lord. 
Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for all nations. Show us how good and pleasant it is when people live together in unity and anoint us with your wisdom so that we may seek the way of life. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for this community of faith. Give us the vision for, of the common good, not clinging to our own possessions, but seeking the fullness of life for all as a testimony to Christ's resurrection. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. We pray for loved ones. Be near to those who walk in darkness and lead us into Christ's light so that our fellowship may be true and our joy may be complete. Pour out your blessing, O Lord. Send us your spirit of peace. Holy Lord God, we remember the friends and family of our congregation. We Amen. ask especially your blessing upon Anna and William, Susan, Jean Risden, Barbara, John and Liz, Margie, Waylon and his family, Ewan, Jeannie and Wade, Francis and her family, the Wallace family, Joe and Jeannie, Ira and Susie, Donna Waldorf, Susie and Mike, Craig Sawyer, Mirka, Todd, Ken and Diane, Emerson and his family, Helen Richardson, Joel and Nancy, Sam, Lisa, Rich and Katie, Ethan Zimmerman, Donna Johnson and the Grace Point Church, Ed Carr, and all others of whom we may be unaware, O oh Lord, we ask your blessing. Pour out your blessing, O oh Lord. Send us your spirit. By the blessing of your spirit, help us to live as we pray, so that the world may come to know the gift of Christ our Lord. And now through Christ, in Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us sing together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Amen. so that others may come to believe that the Lord is risen indeed. This is the blessing of the Lord, life forever. Hallelujah.